They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! What's up, everyone? My name is Ethan. This is Courtside TV. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe and let's get into it. So today I wanted to talk about the Phoenix Suns. Um, this is a team that I've talked about a couple of times throughout this season, but I think they're getting to the point where it's warranted that I talk about them again because this is a team that is very, very, very good. Um, and almost even better than a lot of people expected them to be. Actually, probably for sure even better than most people expected them to be. Um, and this is a team that I felt pretty strongly about in the preseason. And in retrospect, I should have doubled down on that uh, in my preseason record predictions because I think I, I had them in the playoffs. I know that, but I, I shouldn't have put them or I could have put them um, higher because I think I wanted to. Um, but I was just a little bit kind of going with the crowd and saying, eh, this is probably a 7th or an 8th seed. Um, right now, they're they're up there. I think they're the 4th seed in the West right now. They've won 10 of their last 12 games. Um, and this is, this is, I think, actually a legitimate finals threat. And, and I'm not like making that up when I say that. Um, I think the Suns are right there at the top of the conference. Uh, if you're talking about teams in the West, right there with the Jazz and the Lakers and the Clippers um, in terms of teams that you could realistically see making it to the finals. I do think they're really that good. I just think this roster is incredibly well constructed and, and I'll go over why I feel this way about Phoenix. First of all, this is the latest example of the Chris Paul Midas touch, where he has just come in and basically turned this team to gold. Um, he's turned them and maximized everything that they do um, and turned this this Phoenix Suns team into basically a basketball playing machine. Um, he did this last year with OKC. We saw him carry that team to the playoffs, uh, You know, had all of those role players, I think some of them playing the best basketball of their careers, specifically Dennis Schroeder, Gallinari, Shea Gildas Alexander, Lou Dort. Like all those guys were you know, relative nobody at the start of last year like some of those guys obviously Schroeder Gallinari had had experience playing on you know quality teams before but but he was able to get all those guys playing connected playing together got all their lineups working and, and made OKC into an actually really really good team and this year with the Suns it's been no different he's taken all these guys he's turned Devin Booker so Booker is not having a crazy season from like a scoring standpoint as he has done the past couple of years but I think he's playing some of his most efficient basketball some of his you know best basketball of his career I think um, he's been able to play off of Chris Paul well. They, I think their games complement each other perfectly, and they've been able to really maximize each other and figure out how to play together and close out games. Um, as well as Jay Crowder is a guy who comes in and we know what he does. He's been, a, you know, the perfect example of a 3 and D wing. Same with Mikhail Bridges, who is, you know, not just 3 and D. He's a little bit more than that, uh, as, you know, he had talked about in an interview, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but he was just mentioning how, like, you know, you can do the play good defense and shoot the three and he's also, you know, effective on screens and playing off ball and driving into the lane and, and kickouts and all sorts of stuff on offense as well. And he's really expanded his game. Mikhail Bridges is a young player that I really, really, really like. He's just one of those young wings that, that I've fallen in love with as a basketball player. I just think he plays just the perfect perfect brand for a role player i really really like what he's done this year um and then you have other guys like like even at the end of the bench guys like campaign um who has all of a sudden resurrected his career cam johnson the young guy um is shooting the ball really well deandre ayton is of course you know the number one overall pick from a couple of years ago he still has i think a lot of potential left he can potentially get even better than he is right now and he's already having a really good year so this team is deep they have a lot of guys who know how to play um they have chris paul who is a master at organizing everybody on the floor getting them all together getting them all playing connected playing together it took them a little while right they started they started pretty well they had a little bit of a rough patch um, in between but now they're absolutely on fire um, and and it's all thanks to Chris Paul as well as I do want to give a shout out to Monty Williams the coach who I picked to be the coach of the year this season I think he'll have a good case, case for it if they continue to win this way um, and, and he's been a guy who has you know last year we saw his work and, and what he did with them in the bubble um, and he was able to get them all playing at a super high level obviously going 8-0 no. um, and then this year like I said they make some changes bring in Chris Paul you know add in some other veteran pieces and they're just starting right back off where, where they left 
left off last year with just playing at a super high level, playing connected, playing together. Um, and they're just a complete joy to watch because uh, they just play this excellent, excellent ball. And, and I just, I'm just kind of geeking out over Phoenix because this is a team that has been bad for so long. The Suns have just not been very good. I've always loved Devin Booker as a player for his career. I've always considered him one of my favorite players in the league just because I think he can fill it up. He gets so fun to watch when he gets hot. Um, and then finally getting him a team that that like plays to his strengths and, and they're actually playing together and winning. Um, it's just been so fun to watch Phoenix this year. And it, it just leads me to being so happy for Suns fans that they finally have a competitive basketball team again. It's been a long journey. Uh, the past couple of years have been pretty, pretty miserable for Phoenix. Um, and it's interesting because this is a team that I, I shouldn't like as a Warriors fan. They're technically a division rival, uh, but you know, over the past couple of years, they haven't really been a threat. So there's not been really like a reason to, to cheer against Phoenix here. So I've actually kind of find myself taking a liking to to some of the young guys on this team and the way that they've built over the past couple of years. I've always thought they've been kind of fun um, just, just because, like I said, I really liked Devin Booker as a player and then some of the other young guys they brought in I kind of liked. A lot of them ended up not working out. Um, but but they've had a very long road back um, ever since, basically ever since Steve Nash left. Um, it's just been a total, you know, a total rebuild for the past, how long has it been? Like six, seven, eight years? It's been a very long time since the Suns have been anything close to competitive. Um, so it's good seeing them back because this is a franchise that obviously has never won a title, but they've gotten really close multiple times, um, you know, made it to the finals with Charles Barkley and had some really, really good years with Steve Nash and the seven seconds or less offense and all that stuff. This is a team that I feel like has always been sort of innovative and always had a really fun brand of basketball to watch when they've been good. Um, so I'm just glad to see the Suns back and competitive again. And on, honestly, like I really honestly, truly do believe that this team is a finals threat. I do. I, I don't know what it is about them uh, but they just play so connected and they have a lot of guys who know how to win they honestly remind me of last year's heat uh, and how much fun I had watching them in the bubble um, you know there's a couple of carryovers right they brought in Jay Crowder from that team and and it just feels like they're they're playing a similar way to how Miami did last year where Jimmy Butler kind of got everybody connected and playing well together um, and and Chris Paul is doing the same thing for this year's Suns. so um, I I'm hoping that they're successful in the postseason um, and I think it will translate over just because of how grounded they feel um, there's there's something almost indescribable about this uh, but it just every time that I watch the Suns I just feel so like calm about it like I just feel so chill I'm like don't freak out like they're if they go down 10 it's like it's fine they're just gonna you know hit a couple threes and they'll be right back in this game like I just feel very calm and collected when watching Phoenix it's just the ball zips around the court and they always find the open shot and the guy just knocks it down every time it's it's just crazy how it, it's I don't know I just I just feel so like at peace when I'm watching the Suns it, it's basketball nirvana in a way um, and maybe that's weird because like they're not like a crazy great team like they're I just looked at it they're the fifth seed they're tied with Portland in terms of record um, so you know it's not like they're setting the league on fire or anything but uh, the, the Suns are fun and I'm glad seeing them playing well again <laughs> So all I'm saying is watch out. If they get a proper playoff seed, like, you know, if they if they stick a 4-5 or five matchup, I think they're more than capable. And if you get a team like the Jazz or the Lakers in the second round, um, I would watch out for Phoenix because especially if, if, like, one of those teams has suffers an injury, like, we, we still have no idea about the Anthony Davis thing. Like, obviously, he will be healthy by the time the playoffs come around, but he's been a guy who's been known to have nagging injuries throughout his career. So I don't know. Uh, you know, if things break right for them, I could definitely see them making a run. Um, and, and I would love to see it because I've been a guy who has sort of cheered against Chris Paul at times in his career. Um, we know how, when he was on the Rockets, they had that big thing with the Warriors for those, those two years. Um, and he's always been a guy who I've felt kind of complains to the refs a little too much and maybe flops a little too much. But you cannot deny the, the pure point guard play from him. Um, and, and the excellent passing ability and just the way to get everybody involved and, and calm everybody down and slow things down and get the perfect shot every possession. Um, and, and that's one thing that I do really enjoy when watching him. It's been fun um, seeing him on this team. Um, and, and yeah, I don't know. Just watch out for Phoenix because I really, they're, they're just very rock solid. Um, and 
this might be the sleeper team of the league right now. I know people sort of have been talking about them. There's a couple other teams you could point to as, as you know, sleeper contenders. Uh, but I think for me, it's probably the Suns. And yeah, I think that's about all I have today on Phoenix and uh, just how much of a joy they've been this year. But yeah, like I said at the top of the video, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Leave a like, ring the bell if you want to. Leave a comment letting me know what you think about the Suns uh, or any other team you feel like is really... Uh, you know, tickling your fancy, I guess, this year. What, what team have you really enjoyed watching the most? For me, it's definitely been Phoenix, aside from, of course, my Golden State Warriors, because I watch them every night. But, but Phoenix has definitely been a favorite for me. Um, but yeah, with all that said, I'll see you guys in the next one.